All right, so this offseason, the Padres got you Darvish, Blake Snell, but they're also still paying for Eric Cosmer, Manny Machado, Will Myers, and I think they're offering some type of lifetime, huge supermax contract to Fernando Tatis. But the question is, how the heck are they paying for any of this? How did this once poverty-stricken franchise that no one wanted and no one wanted to root for end up having one of the highest payrolls in the MLB? It's literally nonsense. But it's also a good YouTube video. So let's look into it. Let's try to find out where the Padres are getting their money. Alright, so the Padres currently have the 7th highest payroll for 2021, and they're still not done spending. That's wild. Like, they currently have a higher payroll than the Boston Red Sox. If you told me 10 years ago that they would have a higher payroll than the Boston Red Sox, you, you're on some, bro. That ain't it. I would have never believed that. I have never seen a team from San Diego in my lifetime spend this much money and invest this much money to winning a championship. So how the heck are they doing it? Forbes currently has the Padres ranked as the 17th most valuable MLB organization. That's not even that high. In 2020, they ranked 16th in total revenue made and 15th in operating income. None of these numbers are good. How can you afford the seventh highest payroll based off these very, very mediocre numbers? One possible answer is that the Padres are growing really, really quickly. Despite mediocre current valuation and mediocre current revenue numbers, the Padres actually saw the seventh highest growth in valuation in 2020 out of any MLB franchise. In fact, if you look at operating income, the Padres made $52 million in 2020. In 2019, they made $49 million. And in 2018, they made $26 million. This is some exponential growth. So maybe the Potters are just investing now because they know the brand will only grow into the future. Honestly, I don't even know if this is a good thing. The more I think about it, I really like being a small market team. I don't like this new look Padres team. Let me give you an example of how bad it's gotten. Forbes also has this weird formula on their site called win slash player cost. And it basically gives you a value that evaluates how many wins you got based on how big your payroll was compared to the rest of the payrolls during that season. The Padres from 2018 to 2020 have seen that number decrease from 123 to 92. Now I don't think these numbers represent actual win numbers, but they serve as a standardized scale on which to base these numbers and this statistic on. Simply put, a higher number is better, and so when I say the Padres have seen this number decrease from 123 to 92, that is bad news. Take the Dodgers for example, in 2020 when they won the championship, that number was 94. The Rays on the other hand, in 2020, the number was 215. So the Rays are clearly getting max value out of their money. I don't know, this is just a personal take, but I like being an underdog, and I don't know if having a high payroll is necessarily a good thing. Anyways, this valuation theory, I don't think it stands up in the long run, because the Padres also saw over $100 million in losses in 2020 because of all the COVID stuff. So I don't know where they got all this money to spend. It doesn't matter how much your franchise is valued in the future, if you don't have any money to spend now. That's why I don't think this theory holds. But there is a second theory. The Padres might have gotten all of this new money because they have a new owner. In November of 2020, former majority owner Ron Fowler gave away his majority ownership to Peter Seidler. Seidler's money comes from his private equity firm that's valued around $3 billion. He has an MBA from UCLA I don't know much about UCLA, but I heard it's a garbage school. But yeah, maybe this new owner just wants to spend a whole lot of money. Nah, I don't think so. Because the thing is, even before 2020, Seedler had his hands in every major transaction. He wasn't just a minority owner, but he apparently had a lot of influence on what went on and how much money the Padres were willing to spend. I mean, think about it. Seedler was involved with the Padres since 2012. And in that time, the Padres have signed Will Myers, Manny Machado, 
Eric Hosmer, and even traded for guys like Justin Upton and James Shields. All of these deals happened before this current offseason where the Padres just went super all out. So I don't think it's rational to think that just because the Padres have a new owner, they're willing to spend more. This theory just doesn't work for me. So the question is, how are the Padres getting the money? We still haven't answered that. Well, I have an answer, and it has to do with Trevor Rosenthal. If you follow his Twitter, and side note, you should follow me on Twitter at Samuel underscore out, because that is where I'm the most active and most interactive with all of you guys. And you should subscribe to the channel because Yankee Sam 11 is cool. But returning back to the topic, if you follow Trevor Rosenthal's Twitter, you would have seen tweets like this. My question is, what is so unique about Lolita's? It's not even the best Mexican food place in San Diego. And I think the answer is, the Padres are laundering their money so they don't have to pay taxes. They're using Lolita's. They have a secret deal with them where they can write off their income as Lolita's income and not have to pay taxes on it. That's how I think the Padres got their money for 2021. I'm just kidding, or am I? If you made it this far in the video, leave a comment down below what your favorite Lolita's order is, and maybe someday we can all get Lolita's together.